<clears throat> so, yeah, this light is pretty, pretty intense. Um, okay. Jermaine was St. Joseph. He was the father of Jesus and so forth. Um, and many other people over the course of history, uh, including Merlin, Christopher Columbus, you know, um, and was instrumental in the foundation of America, by the way. So um, that's my mission. But I think it, part of the mission is to clarify the teachings of Mother. Not to say that Mother's teachings are not complete. I talked about Obamacare and how dangerous Obamacare is in the context of what it is that I'm doing at the UN, which is trying to protect people from torture activity that's going on in locked ward hospitals. And so if we start trying to nationalize health care now, when the United States isn't even aware of how to go about supporting the treaty, then we're increasing the risk that people are going to be tortured in a mental hospital. Totally inappropriate. And so, um, you know, and I know that we eventually will prevail. Call it a prediction. I mean, I know that it's true. I am declaring it now that we will eventually pre prevail. I started a prayer spiral against Riverview Psychiatric Hospital where people are routinely being tortured to the point of permanent, permanent disability, forced to commit suicide. And, you know, I started the spiral two years later. Actually, I think it was about a year later, the federal government cut $20 million from the budget, tried to close it, and the only reason it remains open is because the state of Maine refuses to follow federal law and refuses to follow the law of the UN. And there are certain lawyers there who have managed to penetrate certain necessary uh, mechanisms and fora who are able to get their point across in a manner in which the non-God-directed part of the United States doesn't. So it's important to focus on, you know, government when government is happens to emanate from a certain source when the, when the proper God is working through a, a certain channel in order to increase and protect our freedoms it's, it's important to focus on that particular channel at least for the time being and again US sovereignty is only as good as it is sovereign in fact you know they can claim to be immune from world opinion all they want in Washington, but if they are doing things that are not God-directed, they ought to be stopped. That's my whole presentation. So, um, in any event, so I mentioned that, that this was the video I, I made, but we don't, if you hear something that is offensive to your own moral reckoning, and you know is wrong, then you shouldn't permit it. You don't, you don't permit something just because someone in the church says, oh, well, pastor so-and-so or minister so-and-so said X, Y, and Z, so it must be true. Well, no, that's not true. It's like, it has to be true in fact. It has to be from God in fact in order for it to be holy, truthful, and so forth. So, um, you know, don't let, don't be deterred from a very powerful, wonderful religion that's going to open you up to all of this, these resources and spiritual paths because you hear one thing that is not consonant with your understanding of the truth. That was part of my message, you know, and learn how, learn how to, how to filter that information and to purify it. And you'll find if you decide to work with Guru Ma, um, you will find that, again, the, 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 v, the vehicle is human, but not fully human. With, with, so there are going to be, the energy is human, I suppose is true, or not even human is, it's language. So it's fundamentally flawed. And I think the channels are, are taking place in this concrete, sphere it's aramonic i believe is the term used by steiner by the way so as opposed to luciferic in the blood the blavatskian sense not in the satanic sense of lucifer in the in the blavatskian sense which is i guess the more very roughly stated the more etheric energy aramonic being the more concrete energy well so we're all down here trying to manage energy and trying to manage language. So periodically, there's going to be something coming out of even mother's mouth um, that is you don't want 
to hear recur. And so you you pray for that moment that it is, and understand, using El Moria energy, uh, and it's a Hindu practice, and again, I'll get you guys the words for it, um, you know, by being stern within yourself and understanding that um, it's just a moment that is being improperly qualified. And so once that moment is passed, because Mother is Guru, she will bring the a pure version of the message into her next teaching. And it is true, and it does unfold that way. Um, so um, I wanted to impart that a little bit early. I suppose that's coming out in advance of what I would have otherwise anticipated. But that's important to remember in the practice. But I would hate for someone to go away from Church and Reversal and Triumphant or TSL because they heard something that was not really in line with, I don't know, if you, you heard someone express something that you thought was kind of bigoted, for instance, um, then, you know, you have to say, consider the source, like that person who's saying that is human, and I'm not going to let it taint my particular relationship with my guru, because I'm holding that relationship on a pedestal, because alchemically putting that person, quote unquote, on a pedestal, that person has has earned it, because as, as you do, he or she is walking the path of Christhood and doing the absolute best that he or she can karmically. And so they are um, not owed the that sort of adoration, but they are worthy of devotion, you know, in the bhakti yoga sense. So um, don't let other people's ignorance, if you happen to encounter it, interfere with your spiritual path. It would be a shame for you to do that. And I believe, and Mother would be the first person to say, you should be making your own choices. It's all about free will. And um, don't believe it because it's coming out of me. Believe it because you find a way to believe it. But I mean, sh you know, do believe it because it's coming out of Mother when it is truthful. And value those moments. And there are many, many, many of them. Um, because she has the messengerial mantle of God. I believe Summit University can be one place that you go to study to become a minister within Church Universal and Triumphant, but holy orders are holy orders um, that can be joined. According to the writing, currently, it depends upon your level of involvement in the church, um, but certain people are, you know, free to, free to join, or uh, certain holy orders are open for people to join. Okay, um, I'll look into whatever it is that you want me to look into. I will say that holy orders are part of as I participate in them, are were um, appointed by, I think, Lanello and El Moria. Um, it's one, it's one or one of those masters, and it's I refer to the, the particular pearl on um, the the teaching that I deliver about the five secret rays, the video recorded um, teaching that I deliver on my YouTube playlist under New Thought Spirituality. Just go to Ben Turner New Thought Spirituality and you'll find it. If you go to the new website and you input information at the new website, do a search, I believe that now it searches for the entire array of pearls. Or you get information going back 30 years at least, 20 or 30 years from the pearls. And it'll pull you up. It won't pull you up the pearl like you receive them in the e in the email. It's not in PDF format, it's in HTML. But you can do search for holy orders and look to see which master said what about it when in the dictations. E for those of you who don't know, the pearls, e pearls are the pearls of wisdom are dictations from masters received by Elizabeth Clare Prophet. So beloved Mary will be delivering information at one point. One of the pearls will be from Beloved Mary, or Kathumi, or El Moria, Jesus, um, so and so forth. I'll, I'll help you answer any of those questions. I really feel that it's my sacred labor. If you have a list of questions, or you're con you, you want to know about a particular master, or more history about theosophy, or Gnostic topics, you know, definitely let me know. 
And it's Ahab, by the way. Wanted to get this across. I was talking about Jezebel and Solomon. The masters, I said that in one of the recordings that I said, I said I thought there was a relationship between Jezebel and Solomon. Well, there's no um, obvious relationship beyond their, um, the biblical connections that we'd have to research. The master said to me, study Jezebel and study Solomon. Even though there's no discernible connection necessarily. Jezebel's husband was Ahab. And according to the Bible, and again, let's not take it at face value necessarily, because there are inner temple teachings suggestive of deeper meaning than what you might be perceiving on the surface when you read the Bible. But Ahab allegedly was, um, you know, one of the evil leaders to encourage all sorts of pagan, orgiastic pagan practices and that sort of thing that were not. Uh, according to the will of God. So Jezebel and Ahab were not um, revered figures if you want to take the really superficial um, interpretation of the, of the Bible. My presentation elsewhere and talking about this one woman, this one woman from another church, not connected to us, um, said, was was making remarks critical of the Summit Lighthouse and saying that Elizabeth Clare Prophet was a false teacher. So, of course, I didn't become defensive. I engaged her to the extent that I felt it was appropriate to do so. Um, and I made a brief recording about that as well. And she said, well, the, the, Bible, the Bible referring to Jezebel, when the Bible refers to Jezebel, she's referring, they're referring to mother. So... I mean, we don't want to accept that mother was a false prophet at all. However, if you look at the Jezebel and Ahab story, there might be elements to the story that um, indicate that the Bible might have been pointing in our direction <laughs> somehow. Um, if for no other reason than we are seen, or some fundamentalist Christians or typical Christians or Orthodox religions see us as being um, radicals off the path of what it is that we're quote unquote supposed to be doing so in that respect the bible could be saying without making an evaluative judgment against mother that well we'll call this particular figure in history jezebel and it'll come out in the bible as being she did all these bad things while she was accused of, be, of doing all these horrible things so possibly there's some sort of relationship there i don't really know i would never accept um a condemnation of mother but it might be the case that the Bible's, the language of the Bible is, is you know, um, that there's an inner temple teaching there somewhere. But I think that there are, and like, more likely there are, there are better um, figures. I mean, uh, Martha is a much better, um, uh, stronger biblical reference, I suppose, than Jezebel. Um it would be the case, for instance, that people would, it would seem likely that people would refer to detractors from our faith, would refer to our guru as being a quote-unquote Jezebel. But I don't know that, and it could be that maybe the Bible anticipated the evolution of mother, or in it, but I think some of that might also bear out with more, more, more convincingly in you know, the, the Apostle John's writings on the apocalypse and so forth. Okay. All right. So I'll talk to you guys soon and namaste. Um, I'm going to take a break for now. I might be back in a bit. I'll see what it is that I can pull together. I have to take care of a couple of uh, house housekeeping things here. Okay. Thanks. Bye.